good ear. She tells me that I was able to figure out Moon River on their piano. So she got me classical lessons, and I didn't practice. And it was the 70s, and we were, my father worked in a factory. My mom said, if you're not going to practice, that's it. You're just not going to, we're not going to pay for this. And when I was 14, um, my friend, when I was 13, my friends had a band, and they, they were playing, I only played one song, Taking Care of Business. And the pianist taught me how to play Taking Care of Business, and I sort of extrapolated and figured out that if you just went up from the one to the four and then went to the seven chord, you suddenly had the blues going on. And since my parents quarreled a lot, I noticed that a great way to drown them out was to play the blues, so I taught myself the blues. Um, but what happened was I, I was always very lazy about developing technique on the piano. I mean, I did Bach inventions and stuff, but badly. And I heard things in my head. And I, I wanted, I became a composer because I, I'm a shitty musician, is really, you know, I became a composer because I'm a lousy singer. Because I'd hear things and I didn't have the, the um, I didn't have the chops to play the things I heard, but if I got other people to do my bidding, I, I got to experience hearing what I wanted to hear. And let those people take all those years to get all those chops. I have a different kind of chops. It's kind of an internal mental chops that at no point seems to be connected to my body, you know, except the, the my... Uh, Orchestrated for big feature films like Harry Potter, the, the last two Harry Potter films, Argo's coming out now, uh, just did a thing called Rise of the Guardians. So I orchestrate a lot of big films. I score really small ones that nobody's ever heard of, but there's about ten projects that if they get their funding, I will be scoring them, you know. And, uh... The piece is called um, Shifting Winds, which, you know, yeah, you're wind players, you know, but. But the idea, what I'm trying to do is take a motive, a simple idea, a simple thematic idea, and keep shifting it so that the modality of it changes constantly, and the harmony changes constantly. I thought, it's time to write something where I sustain an idea for six, seven minutes, you know, so, you know, which is really, you know, theme and variation is kind of the meat of what we do as composers, and I thought, this is time for something like that, and so, uh, you know, even though the tempo changes, I've got this constant thematic idea that keeps coming back and keeps coming back and is phrased slightly differently in terms of the scale that I'm using for it. And then there's also this idea of pulsing notes with the note that's a sharp, you know, one, one half step sharp and one half step flat going against it so that it has this sort of quavery, wavering quality to it. And, you know, this collaboration with Third Wheel is something that I have been sort of, you know, talking to Joe about the need to find established groups who want to collaborate with us. Because I think there's more incentive if you're a group, you want to work with us and then you want to really get these pieces right because it's not just our work, it's your work. Because you guys are so brilliant at playing new music and challenging music and you're into it. You know, the point is you're invested in this and it's really clear from what you're doing. And I'm really happy because I wrote something that I know was challenging and, it, you know, what you're doing makes it seem, you know, the whole idea. I guess the thing I like to do as a composer is I want to write things that are challenging, but I don't want people listening to think, oh, that's really hard. The idea is to make it feel effortless so that the audience isn't preoccupied with the challenges that the performers are, you know, 